part two of the caterpillar stitch will show you the specifics of using this stitch as part of your book, either as a decorative element, as with my example of the cased in book, or as part of the binding, as seen in this example. Here are a couple of general tips that apply to all of these applications. First, I like to protect the cover I'm working on with tracing paper so I can draw the pattern on the paper. I sew over this and then tear the paper away once I'm done. This is beneficial in several ways. First, I can draw a pattern that suits the cover material that I've chosen. Secondly, I can number the sides and the holes, and that really helps keep things from getting confusing while I'm sewing. Lastly, I always use waxed thread for this, and the wax can be a little greasy or messy with this process. So the paper helps keep the cover clean while I work. I use a gentle painter's tape to tape it down, the kind that isn't supposed to pull the paint off your walls. Also, something that I mentioned at the beginning of the part one video was a technique for hiding the back side of the stitch if you don't want that to show. The way to do that adds a little upfront preparation, but is simple enough to accomplish. First, you'll want to have your pattern figured out and your holes punched. You'll also want to trim the little cardboard mountains off so you don't have those little bumps showing up under your end papers. I show one method for doing that in part one of the caterpillar stitch. Then, once you have the holes punched, you know where the thread is going so you can cut shallow grooves between the holes to allow the thread to lie in. Mark these with a pencil and then cut them deep enough for the thread to nestle in. Make V-shaped cuts to make it easy to extract the excess cardboard. Test the depth of your thread and the cuts as you go. Specific to wrapping the caterpillar around a case-bound book, you'll probably want a pair of holes in the spine where the caterpillar will be crossing that area. Once you are sewing the caterpillar, be very careful that you aren't pulling the threads too tight where they cross the spine. And keep in mind that packing those threads will make them even tighter, so make sure you keep them a little looser as they cross the spine. If they end up being too tight after being wrapped, your book won't stay closed. It is easier to wrap those particular body segments where the threads cross the spine with the book cover open, but if you do that, you'll probably unintentionally wrap them too tightly, so resist the urge to do that and wrap them with the cover closed. Once you finish sewing your caterpillars, remove the tracing paper, press down the threads on the inside with a bone folder so they lie flat in the grooves that you've cut for them, and then attach your text block. I added one extra step here, which was to add a piece of cardstock to the inside of each cover to act as an extra barrier to the threads first before I attach the text block. This isn't necessary, and you could skip this step, but I like the little bit of extra padding it puts between the text block and the inside threads. I won't go into the details of constructing the book cover or the text block in this video, but if you need help learning how to create the parts of a cased-in book, watch the videos here. Also, attaching the text block to the cover is beyond the scope of this video, but you can see how to do that here. So those are the main details of adding this stitch to a case-bound book. The following instructions will show you how to incorporate it into the binding itself. As mentioned earlier, you will probably want to combine this with another stitch, like a Coptic stitch, in order to give the binding a little more stability. But you can also just use the caterpillar stitch if you don't mind if the binding is a little loose. Begin the caterpillar stitch as you normally would for any application. You can allow the back side of the stitch to show, as it does in this example, or prepare your boards as shown with the case-bound example, cutting grooves to hide the threads. Once you've used up all the holes in the board, you will use the holes in the signatures just as if they were holes in the board, going in through one hole and out through the other hole in the signature, creating that same ladder effect on the back side, only this time it will happen inside each signature. The main thing you want to pay attention to as you sew into and across the spine is to make sure that you don't pull your threads too tight. Keep the threads loose as they cross the signatures and the spine, and remember that you will be wrapping these threads which tightens them up. If you need to see how to prepare your signatures, watch the video here. Once you start treating the holes in the signatures the same way you do the holes in the bookboard, then you'll understand that the process is exactly the same. Really, the only difference is that you keep the legs of those stitches surrounding the spine looser than normal. You'll tighten these up once you start packing them. Use the same techniques as shown before, using tissue paper to mark your holes if necessary, and using toothpicks to mark the next section of body to wrap. Continue the process of wrapping body segments and sewing in and out of the next set of holes, whether those are in the signatures or in the bookboard. Finish it off as shown in the first video by wrapping any final body segments and then running the needles up through the center of those and trimming the threads.